is the, the uh, uh, it, let's deal with the um, story that the God, the Nori de Sullivan, the God, the Commissioner, says that she never believed that uh, Morris McCabe, the God, the whistleblower, was acting maliciously and making allegations of impropriety within and God, the Shikana. Uh, are you persuaded by that? Um, I'm sorry to say I'm not, uh, because it's in total conflict with the story that we had in the examiner on Friday, of which I stand over 100%, and that is that um, the Commissioner's legal counsel made a submission to the Commission that uh, it would be part of their case that uh, Sergeant McCabe had acted with malice. They specified that as coming from a meeting in which Sergeant McCabe met two other officers who the Commission was told were going to say in evidence that he expressed malice at that meeting. After that, Sergeant McCabe produced a tape recording which showed that was not the case and the judge accepted, as far as I understand, that version of events entirely. Now, I can't see how you can marry that with the Commissioner's oh, yeah, statement well, tonight. I, I think you can, um, okay. because, because here they were saying, they were obviously misled um, about what had happened at that meeting that Morris McCabe had with two other Gardaí. Um, and and they, they accepted what they had understood was communicated at that meeting not involving the Gardaí Commission well, if, you, if, you, if, you put in that, if you put in that context then what you're suggesting or what that would infer is that the Commissioner was willing to go along with an attempt to blacken Sergeant McCabe's character on the basis of what she was told by these two individuals despite the fact that publicly she had said that what he did was correct. I don't think that's fair because you're saying that the Commissioner wanted to go ahead to blacken um, Morris McCabe. It was uh, her council. Uh, but at her council, that's different. Her council uh, wouldn't necessarily He was have acting been, on instructions. But he, is there any evidence that he acted on instructions from Noreen O'Sullivan uh, to say that Morris McCabe acted for reasons of malice? Um, I believe there is. Well, tell us what that well, is. Well, it was in the story on. on Friday. I mean, the, 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 the council was asked by Kevin O'Higgins, is it your intention to attack Sergeant McCabe's character, to attack his integrity? And I think the reply was right the way through. And, as I say, I don't need to emphasise, well, the council is not... And he, say, he's, he, he wasn't, presumably, he wasn't on a, a, a free um, run himself. He was acting on instructions. Worth bearing in mind, just that now, Vincent, that as I understand it, because we checked the, the, the appendices to the report before we came in and it lists the, all of the witnesses and all of the various councils that were represented by um, Noreen O'Sullivan and the, the, the senior counsel who was mentioned in Nick's story on, on Friday morning. Um, he was instructed by the Office of the Chief State Solicitor. So this isn't just simply a case of the guards uh, taking their own private legal advice. This goes to the very core of the state itself because the state's own but solicitor The point I'm making it. is that it wouldn't necessarily be the case that the council would be briefed in the detail that you're suggesting that um, the, the, the council may just have themselves concluded that there was an issue of malice involved without any instruction being given to them by, by no, the guy the commission. And, and no, no, Vincent, the, the council, from my understanding, it was briefed entirely on the basis of this specific incident and that this would be used, used in a perfectly legitimate fashion as far as they were concerned, if it had been true, right the way through the Commission to demonstrate that Sergeant well, McCabe was acting uh, with malice. I, 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 I think there's an issue here. I, 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 I think your assumption that Council always act on the basis of instructions, I don't think that is always the case. I think in something as specific and as serious as this, the idea that a senior counsel, an experienced senior counsel, would not be acting on that basis, I would find very difficult to believe. I think well, the key is the words right the way through, Vincent. To, to be fair, I, I understand your point, but I'm not sure if it's tenable for a senior counsel to say, under clarification, to say that you were going to pursue this line right the way through, in quotes, unless it was something that you'd been instructed to, to pursue. And there's another issue, Vincent, and that is, I think the Commissioner is obliged to come out and give a proper statement in relation to this whole matter. Now, she claims that she's precluded from doing so on the basis that the legislation says that uh, it's a criminal offence to disclose can and we publish... Put, we can put this section uh, yeah, uh, on it, screen, yeah. She says it's a, it, it is a criminal... Um, 
offence. I'm legally precluded from doing so under Section 11 of the Commission Investigation Act 04, which provides that it is a criminal offence to disclose or publish any evidence given or the contents of any document produced by a witness. Now, first of all, in the examiner's stories, there was no evidence. Um, in terms of what the Commissioner can say, it has nothing to do with evidence. It was a legal submission. It was delivered by her counsel. There is not, and Joan Burton referred to this in her statement today. There is nothing to preclude the Commissioner from giving a full statement on A, was she misinformed, which is quite possible. If so, it was a very, very serious incident. Was there any repercussions for the two officers involved? And, there, you know, it's, it's a very serious thing because... I suppose the, the issue is, did she specifically brief her counsel to make this submission? Yes. Or, or did, did, did she discuss with counsel this, this submission and agree that this submission would be made? That would be an issue, I, I, I assume. But I, I think that we have to assume that there is some um, innocent explanation for this because this is a person of integrity. And I don't think that she would, I, 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 I don't believe that she would be saying something she, uh, she knew to be false. Oh, I, I, I agree with you there, but the, the issue there then is, as a commissioner, if, if that scenario pertained, then two officers misinformed her and did so in a way that she briefed against a sergeant whom publicly she praised for what he had come out and done. If that's the case... Where are the repercussions for that within the force? What has she instigated to suggest that she regarded that as a serious breach of discipline at the very minimum? We haven't heard a thing about that. I think that she's under pressure now. I mean, she, she's done a complete U-turn, it seems, since she was first appointed. She said she would support whistleblowers, and it doesn't really seem to be the case. And I think she said you what? She said that when she was first appointed that she would support whistleblowers and anyone who wanted to come forward. And now, I mean... If I was a whistleblower, a potential whistleblower within the Gardaí right now, I don't think I would come forward. Um, on the question of who was acting on whose instructions, by the way, Vincent, it's worth bearing in mind that the senior council involved in this particular exchange that formed Mick's story on, on Friday, not only were they um, hired or instructed by the Office of the Chief State Solicitor, but the same legal team represented not only Noreen O'Sullivan, but the two former commissioners, Faulkner Murphy and uh, Martin Callanan, and all of the other members of the Gardaí who were implicated by Mar Morris McCabe's uh, allegations the whole way down. So a deputy yeah, commissioner and assistant even commissioner... More, well, uh, more, um, more confused, because it could have been somebody else that... Uh, that no, the, the, the council was specific on who, whose instructions he, he was um, he was. And on what basis are you say, asserting this? Well, sir, if it was in the story on Friday. He, 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 he was asked, was, that on the, was it the commissioner that wanted to follow this um, line? And he said he was operating on instructions. I know, but th uh, where do you get this from? It fell off the back of a lorry. I mean, wh wh what do you expect me to say to that? Um, well, uh, have you had you have you two ha have you? I, I assume that it fell. Let's assume it fell off the back of a lorry. But then, did you did you independently confirm that it fell, fell off the back of the lorry was true? I am one hundred percent secure and confident in the veracity of that story that was published. All right, tell us about the story that you have in the examiner tomorrow, the, the McCabe threat to injunct inquiry report. What's that? This was when the draft report, as I understand it, was released. Um, Sergeant McCabe uh, was, as I understand it, very perturbed because he felt it was entirely imbalanced. And one of his main issues with that was the fact that this matter was not included at all in the draft report. As a result of that, he was minded to take a legal action to injunct the report. We saw something similar, actually, in the um, Moriarty uh, draft report where the, the, there, there was a similar scenario. Now, ultimately, he didn't do that because the cost would have been so prohibitive. But I think it just demonstrates how perturbed he was that this matter in particular and I think there may have been a few others, well, but this, I think, was one of the main reasons. Which matter are you talking about? The matter about the, 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 attempt, issue, yeah. the attempt to impugn his character, that, um, that this hadn't been included in the report. And I have to say, just looking at it, there's a question there for Kevin O'Higgins. Let's, for example, assume that, he ha that Sergeant McCabe didn't have a tape recording of that and that officers came in and said he had expressed malice would that have been in the final report? Would it have been? We'd have had a very different report 
remember completely. You would have had a report that suggested that McCabe had brought forward these allegations on the basis of malice and therefore they had to be treated on that basis and seen in that light. That's the kind of report you would have if he hadn't protected himself with a tape recording. And would that have been included? And if so, why was it not included as it emerged here? It does raise the other question, though, as to whether the inquiry would have been allowed to include that if... As you mentioned, that if it was included on the basis of arguments by lawyers and not by evidence from witnesses, that if this was something that was brought to the tribunal only by lawyers chatting amongst themselves, really. Oh, yeah, the truly, the inquiry but the time to make a if on there that? was an indication yeah. that there was going to be evidence to that effect, and then the tape recording was produced, surely it was incumbent to still hear the evidence to see what was going to be said. OK, uh, we, we've got to take a break, but I think just before we go to the break, it's, it's fair to say that, yes, questions arise, um, in, uh, and... Further questions arise that the God the Commissioner has got to address. But I think it's fair to say that given her record and given her stature and, and known integrity, that it's very unlikely that she is telling a lie about a matter as central as this to the whole uh, Higgins report. Anyway, join us after the break.